Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dave Sullivan, and I have been building these rigs for a while now. And I read a fantastic article this morning about powered risers. As you can see, these are R929s. I have four of them. And yes, I could put six, or I could put seven. And I've done it. I've done the six. And I've done the five. And I have figured it out, no matter what, four is my happy spot. Now, I was using powered risers. Because I always had two power supplies. But then I came across this theory. Buy one big power supply that'll run four super happy and I don't have to screw around with two power supplies which is a pain in the butt second I don't have to worry about all the crossing over of power now my crossing over of power was happening because I was using powered risers now as you can see these are my powered risers and they're not hooked up not hooked up not hooked up and not hooked up. Running all on PCX 1 to 16s. You see that in there? Okay. So, four PCX 1 to 16 risers. Non powered is all you need. Running four of these. Now, before we get into the arguments about specs, I learned today that this is a 16 and the 16 is spec for 75 watts. This is a 1 and the 1 is spec for 75 watts. Now, they both share the same power rails through the board, which means it doesn't matter. That's just a spec from back in the day. If you overload it all, fine. Now, the other thing to know, the power that goes in the top of your video card back here is not connected to the power that goes in through this. Check your video card with an ohmmeter. Make sure there's no resistance between them, but you will find not, or that there is a solid resistance. There's not, it's not connected. So, if you're using the same power supply, same motherboard, same plug, same everything, use non-powered risers and they are perfectly fine and there's more than enough power in that big bus to handle at least four R9 290s running happily let me show you here 810, 810, 810 and that's at an 18 intensity you can see my temperatures are super happy, happy, happy I have my fan set to 90% I show you everything you ever want to know. La. Very little rejects. It always settles in the one and a half percent for me. Everybody's happy. Okay? So, here's my suggestion for the easiest build you'll ever do. Ready? There's the motherboard. It's an MSI 970A G43. Motherboard. Got it? Power supply, Max Revo 1500 by Enermax. Got it? Memory, I buy two sticks of four gigs. You can't see them there. They're, they're crucial. It's actually called crucial. It's easy. But I always use two sticks of four gigs so that I keep the same numbers. Okay. R9 290s, whatever you want to buy. Doesn't matter. Throw them in there. Each one makes a little difference, but... Get four of the same, they'll all work. Now for my settings. Boom. Bring that up. Here we go. All right, I set my pools. And then... Ta-da, there it is. Okay. See if you can see this on the screen or not. It's too bright. All right. I always run intensity 18 because of my... Rejects, thread concurrency, 32764 or 32765. If you have 8 gigs of RAM and dual channel and that motherboard, that's what it will be. GPU engine, 947 1250. That is a base, simple, stock number, 
almost stock, it's not stock, but it will make everything run happy and long term. Yes, you can crank it up to 1,500 if you want to. Things will crash, you'll run into headaches. Are you here to make money? Or are you just here to figure out what's the fastest board you can melt down? Fine. GPU fan, that's different for whatever temperature and where you are. A lot of people like to use auto fan. Go ahead. I'm a strong believer in trying to keep it as cool as I can, so where I'm at, I run it there. Uh, my temp cutoffs and all that I set just to keep them so it shuts her down if I need it. And that's it. Work size, important. 512. Set that up, make sure your pool's pumping the same thing. Other than that, little hint what I do is move all my settings to the top that I change often so these are my most often set settings put them there once again I'm Dave Sullivan here's a happy 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 rig and my number one lesson ready out of all that is this is the most important piece of hardware you will buy the USB stick make sure you buy a Kingston Traveler or a SanDisk cruiser something with really good quality you're gonna spend I happen to get that sand disc it was on a on a shelf it was an 8 gig sand disc for eleven dollars at Walmart right um, my other two machines that are still up and running great have uh, uh, Lexar something but they were they were twenty dollar stick make sure you buy the good quality sticks okay buy that stick don't cheap out yeah you can buy the five pack the cheap pack the whatever once you plug them in and you start having MIT cookie errors or segmentation faults, when you see those, stop everything you're doing, and go get a new USB stick and reinstall it. This is Dave Solomon. I hope this video helps you. Have an awesome day.